Since the beginning of time, the Middle East and Europe have been intertwined through trade and culture. Alexander the Great conquered Persia. The Romans traded with the Ptolemaic Empire. The European Christians fought the Crusades in the Middle East, and so much more. Although after the Dark Ages, the Islamic Empire is one of the main reasons for Europe's success, Europeans still felt the need to imperialize in order to gain oil resources and trade routes. It was the beginning of the end. The Europeans wanted to colonize for many reasons. One of those reasons was to gain natural resources that they didn't have because their geography didn't allow it. <laughs> Oil was a huge market after the beginning of the industrial period. Machines, factories, vehicles, and all other objects that required fuel were dependent on the discovery of the natural resource. And the Middle East was abundant with the black gold. Europeans flocked by the thousands to gain profit that possession of oil reaped, and the colonization of countries with oil fields ensured automatic wealth. Before the imperialization of the Middle East, European food was very bland and distasteful. Geography was also a primary reason Europeans imperialized the Middle East. The Ottoman Empire was one of the most powerful domains in the world during the 15th and 16th century. It was created by Turkish tribes and ruled for almost 600 years. Its eventual demise was in 1922 when it was replaced by the Turkish Republic. The Ottoman Empire was founded by Osman I in the 15th century. It reached its peak of power, wealth, and influence under the reign of Sultan Suleiman I. But like all empires, it eventually came to an end. After Suleiman died, his successor made a brutal military move and attacked Cyprus and slaughtered over 30,000 people. This terrified the rest of Europe, who responded by getting the Ottoman expansion under control. Over the next few centuries, after battles with various European nations, the Ottoman Empire began to weaken. To make matters worse, Austria had recently signed a treaty with Russia, making them allies. In 1736, Russia invaded Crimea, and Austria had no choice but to go with them because of their treaty obligation. Along with the invasion of Crimea, the Russians and Ottomans fought constantly over a piece of land that bordered the Black Sea. They wanted access to a trading port, which was under strict Ottoman rule. In the 17th century, conflicts between them reached their breaking point. In order to achieve their goal of capturing land on the Black Sea, Russians crusaded to the Ottoman Empire. Although the Ottomans put up a good fight, Russians defeated them and weakened the state severely. In the 18th century, a French military leader by the name of Napoleon Bonaparte was quickly gaining power in Europe. His goal was to make all of Europe, the Middle East, parts of Asia, and parts of Africa into a giant empire led by him. His power reached the Middle East when Bonaparte led the Egyptian campaign in 1789. The Battle of the Pyramids was over within an hour. Napoleon's troops marched into Cairo within a day. The Ottoman government that was established in Egypt was no match for Napoleon's troops. In 1890, the devastation continued. The Ottomans slaughtered over one million Armenians in what is now known as the Armenian Genocide. Surprisingly, this was only the beginning of the Ottoman Empire's utter obliteration. continued their downfall during World War I. They were on the losing side of the battle and suffered horrible reparations. Following World War I, the Paris Peace Conference of 1920 was set up to negotiate peaceful terms with the defeated Central Powers. The conference divided the Central Powers colonies and distributed them to other European powers. Paris Peace Conference led to a lot of imperialism because the territories that used to belong to the Triple Entente were divided up between the Allied powers. This division of territory resulted in the British Mandate of Palestine and in the creation of Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan as nation states. Under the Mandate system, a territory that had formerly been held by Germany or the Ottoman Empire was placed under the control of the League of Nations. The administration of that territory was given to one of the victorious nations until the territory could govern itself. Iraq and Palestine became mandates entrusted to Britain, while Syria and Lebanon became mandates to France. 
the Ottoman Empire's fierce reign had finally come to an end. In May of 1920, a revolution swept through Iraq. The people of the nation felt strongly about their independence, and therefore fought tirelessly to gain it. Individuals joined forces, including the two most powerful branches of Islam, the Sunni and the Shia, who usually have their own problems. Mass protests and demonstrations took place and gained momentum until the British could no longer ignore it. The Brits soon reclaimed their authority through violent and brutal methods. The war secretary during that time, Winston Churchill, issued an air raid and reinforcements to aid the struggling soldiers. Tear gas was also an alleged battle tactic Brits used to maintain order among the tribesmen. The rebel army soon lost access to supplies and had to surrender in October of the same year. Iraq would be admitted to the League of Nations on October 3, 1932, after Britain signed to terminate the mandate on the conditions that British officials would help regulate the government and allow British military bases. The Balfour Declaration gave territory to Britain to make a homeland for the Jewish population of the Middle East. However, the document also promised to maintain Arab citizens' religious and civil rights, which would ultimately be the beginning of a century-long conflict. Nationalist movements still began to form by both Arabs and Jews. In 1936, Arab people revolted against the British government and demanded independence. They called the general strike in 1936 as an anti-Jewish and British boycott. By 1937, British had a sufficient advantage over the revolutionaries. Approximately 5,000 Arabs as well as several hundred Jews were killed in the violence. The revolt lasted until 1939 when Arab forces were overpowered and defeated. The Jewish insurgency began as the Arab revolt ended. With the Second World War underway, many Jews started to look for refuge. When they were denied access to what was claimed as their national home, many began to enter illegally. On November 29, 1947, the organization implemented the Partition Plan, dividing Palestine into two separate states. The Jewish state would be called Israel and would accept the partition if it was recognized as an independent state. Israel was accepted into the UN and claimed its independence on May 14, 1948, and the British lifted its mandate over the two states. The Arabs around Israel did not like the new country and saw it as European colonialism. On November 5, 1988, Palestine was finally declared an independent nation by the Palestinian Liberation Organization. They claimed Palestine never had complete sovereignty over a specific territory until then. Oh, oh, no. No. <sighs> Tough climb. As we know, the conflicts between the Palestinians and Israeli forces are still ravaging the Middle East today. In 1926, Lebanon was issued a constitution that was inspired by France's. This constitution created a government, which consisted of a president and a parliament. The cabinet was voted based on popular vote, and then the cabinet would elect the president. However, their reign did not last very long. In fact, a short three months later, the Vichy government was overthrown in both Lebanon and Syria by the failure to fend off British and French rebels. General Gaulle visited Lebanon to officially end the Vichy government rule. The Lebanese seized the opportunity to ask the removal of the French mandate, as well as recognize Lebanon as an independent nation. France was put under international and economic pressure during the wartime, and ultimately led one of Gaulle's delegates to proclaim Lebanon's independence on November 26, 1941. It was 1943 when Lebanon formed its democratic government. These delegates would write the Lebanese constitution, hoping to end the mandate and control of the French for good. The French responded forcefully, arresting the president, prime minister, and other authoritative leaders. Christians and Muslims fought side by side in order to promote pressure onto the French government to release the prisoners. Finally, they compiled on November 22, 1943, by releasing the prisoners and fully recognizing Lebanon's independence. The government was reestablished, and Lebanon became a sovereign nation. The methods of imperialism the Europeans used were direct occupation, diplomatic pressure, and invasion. Because of all this imperialism, many things were affected. New countries were created, boundaries were drawn to suit Anglo-French interests to create the modern day Middle East, and these nations became independent because of their need to be free.
Everything